shave real quick. We need it for the straw. We don't have enough straw. Please, even those. Yes, even those. Hey guys, welcome to Joel Reads Bible. I'm Joel, and I'm reading the Bible so that you don't have to. I am on chapter 5 of Exodus, and I want to apologize. I got a little bit passionate last episode. If you want to go back and watch that, I did have some cho choice words about God. <laughs> I was blindsided by some, some action movie style circumcision that went on. I mean, that is <laughs> really what happened, that in the moment... You know, people usually pull a knife and start, you know, ching, ching, fighting each other. But in this case, there was a circumcision and then some blood. You know, it, it just, there was some insane stuff going on. You can watch that, uh, that episode, that chapter. We're following Moses' story, his saga to go and set God's people free in Egypt. Get them out of there. They're slaves. They're, it's going really, really bad for them. And Moses is the guy that's going to change that. So he's met up with Aaron. Uh, they've done some magic tricks for the Israelite elders. Somehow they're okay to meet up with these Israelite elders. They're slaves, but there still is a functional culture and society within Egypt of the slaves, I suppose. To prove that they are from God, they did some magic tricks. Aaron did them, even though Moses was the one that was shown them. Throwing down staffs, turning into snakes, getting leprosy hands out, turning water into blood, all that stuff. It's, it's just, you know, typical God stuff. And we're going to see what happens now in chapter 5. If you haven't, you know what I'm going to ask you to do. Subscribe. Why wouldn't you? Like this video. Leave a comment. Join the conversation. Don't just take, you know, add, give. Say like, hey, I think you're stupid. <laughs> or, hey, that's really, really clever what you did, said there. Give a little, give a little bit, give a little bit back to me. That's so loud. Okay, here we go. Chapter five. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Let my people go, so that they may hold a festival to me in the desert. And we will call it Burning Man. Is that the reason? Pharaoh should have been like, yeah, go do the thing. Do Burning Man, you know, get, do some music, do some drugs. You know, do the deed, you know, hook up with each other. Hopefully make more girls. Don't make more boys. <laughs> Although I haven't been killing them since you, I guess. Yeah, go for it. Just come back. But no, they want to leave permanently. And this festival, by the way, I have a feeling it's not going to last a weekend or even a month. <laughs> it's going to be 40 years. All right, so here we go. Pharaoh said... Who is the Lord that I should obey him and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. You don't know the Lord? You're telling me your dad didn't mention to you. Joseph showed up, did all this dream stuff, saved you guys from a family. You're saying your dad didn't mention that? I know he didn't write it down anywhere. I know there's no absolutely no record of any of this. But he, he didn't even mention that to you? This is the Hebrew God that was like, everyone was like, he's great. Then they said, the God of the Hebrews has met with us. Now let us take a three-day journey into the desert to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. Or he may strike us with plagues or with the sword. Who's they? This is Moses and Aaron probably trying to pull a trick. He's like, well, let us go and, like, the, our God did, me, did meet up with us. Uh, let us just go and do an offering in the desert. Um, you know, just us. Just, and and, and we'll, we will definitely come back. We're not, we're not going to stay gone forever. But I think that this is a little trick. But the king of Egypt said, Moses and Aaron, why are you taking the people away from their labor? Get back to your work. Then Pharaoh said, who is also the king of Egypt, Look, the people of the land are now numerous, and you are stopping them from working. 
these are again just just lousy dialogue it, it really is look at all the people and you're stopping them from working it's like well we're just gonna go over here and do a do a quick it's almost like they're all just standing in one just in a semicircle or something just talking to each other and like performing it's like what do you t how does this play out actually where they're like come on guys let's all go all the numerous people you know, and they're all like, yeah, let's go do this sacrifice. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Look at how many there are. And they're pulling them away from their work? Moses, no. They're not going anywhere. Like, I don't know. It just seems weird. That same day, has this all been happening on one day? Pharaoh gave this order to the slave drivers and foremen in charge of the people. You are no longer to supply the people with straw for making bricks. Let them go and gather their own straw. They were working together. But require them to make the same number of bricks as before. Don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. That is why they are crying out, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Make the work harder for the men so that they keep working and pay no attention to lies. Pharaoh is smart. Like, I mean, he knows how to keep slaves. You got to keep them from knowing certain information. You know, if you were going to give them, let's say, even like a Bible, you'd have to take certain parts out of it, and just leave other parts in it, just to, make, you know, keep them with the blinders, right? We don't want them to know the lies, which, as you can see, are usually the truth. The lies are often are often true. So this is a good move. And keep them busy. Keep them way too busy to focus on, oh, we, we want to get out of here. It's like, no, <laughs> sorry. Then the slave drivers and the foreman went out and said to the people, this is what Pharaoh says. And let us repeat what was just written. I will not give you any more straw. Go and get your own straw wherever you can find it. But your work will not be reduced at all. So the people scattered all over Egypt to gather stubble to use for straw. <laughs> what? Shave. Shave. Shave real quick. We need it for the straw. We don't have enough straw. You need to shave, please. Please. Even those. Yes, even those. I I'm sorry. Cut them off. We need them for the straw. We don't have any straw. The slave drivers kept pressing them, saying, Complete the work required of you for each day, just as when you had straw. The Israelite foremen appointed by Pharaoh's slave drivers were beaten and were asked, Why didn't you meet your quota of bricks yesterday or today as before? Well, we know why. Why are you, why are you asking me that? You know why. You guys aren't supplying. You guys, you guys used to be the ones that supplied the straw. Which is weird because, you know, we're the slaves. I don't know why you're, you're the one bringing us. But anyway, you used to have the straw, you know. <laughs> A poor craftsman blames his tools, but I could use some straw. <laughs> then the Israelite foreman went and appealed to Pharaoh. Why have you treated your servants this way? Your servants are given no straw. Yet we are told, make bricks, make bricks. Your servants are being beaten. But the fault is with your own people. Why are you treating us that way? We didn't do anything wrong. Pharaoh said, lazy, that's what you are, lazy. That is why you keep saying, let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. Now get to work. You will not be given any straw, yet you must produce your full quota of bricks. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is brutal. The Israelite foremen realized they were in trouble when they were told, you are not to reduce the number of bricks required of you for each day. They could have like edited this, you know, just to... Anyway, when they left Pharaoh, they found Moses and Aaron waiting to meet them. And they said, May the Lord look upon you and judge you. You have made us a stench to Pharaoh and his officials and have put a sword in their hand to kill us. And we blame you. We're used to the Christians eh, casting blame in the wrong place. Because the blame, it, it, it weighs heavily, solely, on God's shoulders, like 100%, right? But 
here, they're already misblaming. We're going to blame you. Don't blame me. Blame Pharaoh, for goodness sakes. This is You guys are slaves to Pharaoh. I'm not your slave master. Moses returned to the Lord and said, Oh, Lord, why have you brought trouble upon this people? Finally, that's the right question, Moses. Lord, why have you caused trouble? You're a troublemaker. No, you're a trouble. I know you're concerned, but you're a troublemaker. Is this why you sent me? Ever so Oh, he's just talking about that one thing. <laughs> Moses, you should have asked this the whole time. Like this has been going on for a while. Ever since I went to Pharaoh to speak your name, he has brought trouble upon this people. No, it already was that way. And you have not rescued your people at all. What are you talking about? It's gotten a little it's gotten a little bit worse. But it was already pretty bad. And it was already God's fault. So, keep in mind that God has hardened Pharaoh's heart. He did that in chapter 4. He said in chapter 4, but I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. It's because of the hardened heart that God is able to kill his son and stuff, but it's also that hard heart, not letting Pharaoh loosen up, that is causing this debacle. Everything is God's fault. Prove me wrong. Everything is God's responsibility. Prove me wrong in the comments, something like that. But uh, let's see if God can turn this around in chapter 6 and how long it takes for God to kind of fix this problem that he's caused and actually get his people free from this uh, nonsense. Anyway, guys, subscribe, comment, like, and we'll see you next time.